Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Entrepreneurial Summit. I'm Janine Boland, founder of Entrepreneurs HQ, which is sponsoring this event. And today with me, we have a multitude of speakers. That I am really excited that you get to meet them. I've been working with these people for years, and they are people that I know, like, and trust. And they're going to help you with your book business. Whether you're a new author or a published author, they will assist you with this. And so the first speaker we have is none other than the author of the book, Funnel Formula. And Gary White, yay, go Gary. Gary helps nonfiction authors. He helps turn oh, readers. Oh, I have in. my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, re turns readers into revenue with high converting book funnels. He helps you generate a multitude of dollars that are usually left on the table. I know that when I went through his system and he was teaching me his processes, I think there's seven steps. Uh, I'm not a very good student. I can't remember right now if this is bad, but, but seven steps to his systems that I was like, oh my gosh, I was leaving 40% of money on the table that I could have been procuring, not only through bump up offers, but also just things that I could do with the book. And so if you ever go into authorpodcasting.com and you get my free book that is there, you will see Gary and his team's work on that website. So Gary, thank you so much for being with us today and helping the authors make money with their book. Thank you very much for having me, Janine. So if you would be willing to kind of get us started, rock and roll, talk to us a little bit about some of the myths that people have with their book and then how you and your book funnels help them out. Yeah, sounds good. So one of the, the big things that we find working with specifically nonfiction authors is that everyone tends to be in one of three places. So either you have a book, but no one knows about it yet. Your book is selling, but you've got no idea who's buying it. You don't have access to that information. Or number three, your book is selling great. Your re readers love it, but you're struggling to get people to take the next step with you. And that's likely if you have some kind of business proposition behind the book, whether that be consulting, whether that's a membership, whether that's online courses, um, and that would be like your main profit driver, but you're struggling to get people into that. If you have all of those three things dialed in, you're probably not looking to come on trainings and, and learn things anymore because you're probably just in your hammock on the beach somewhere chilling out because you've got your millions of dollars sorted and you're you're good to go. <laughs> so <laughs> what we what we concentrate on is helping authors take back control of the sales process to be able to overcome each one of those three issues. Because if you are selling your book on a third party site, the likes of Amazon, like as authors were always just told, you write a book, you put it up on Amazon, right? Like the biggest bookstore in the world. And uh, that's how you sell your copies. That's how people find it. Um, and that's just like the done thing to do. That's what if you ask the average person in the street, or oh, if you're going to write a book, publish it on Amazon, put it up on Amazon. Whereas the problem with that is that you don't have any control over that sales process. So you have no idea how many people are coming to your Amazon listing from day to day looking at your book. It could be that someone's like about to click the buy button to go and order your book, but then the doorbell rings and they get distracted and they go off and then they've got it open in a tab in their browser and they never come back to it and you've just lost that sale. So, and you've got no way of following up with them. It could be when you are... Um, and also then when you are selling on Amazon and you get the sale, you're not getting access to that customer database. You're not getting access to that customer info. So you can't follow up and say, thanks so much for ordering my book. If you'd like help with this, or did you know that I have courses on this? Or did you know that I do a consultation about this? You don't have that direct line of communication. And you can, if you're super savvy, which I'm sure everyone on this call is, you can add call to actions into your book where you can go and down, put your, your email address to go and download a free lead magnet or something like that. But the problem is obviously a, a lower amount of people are going to actually go ahead and perform that action, but also you're not getting access to everyone at the time of purchase. So you can't customize that experience that they're going through. Uh, whereas if you've got control of the customer data, you can actually give a white glove service of bringing someone through the VIP treatment and bring them into your world exactly as you want them to, um, to, to see that. And then again, that comes into the third aspect then that I talk about in terms of getting someone to take the next step with you. If you're able to have this direct line of communication with people now, then you're able to 
tell people about your additional products and services or other ways you can help them, um, other books that you have, all of this all ties together into your ecosystem. And that's where we really concentrate on selling the additional items off the back of your book through, like Janine mentioned, with bump upgrades, with what I call one-click offers or upsells, and then also to back-end offers as well. And we might as well be doing this because Amazon, when you when someone goes to buy your book on Amazon, they have that little box that says, people who ordered this also ordered this. And you get like little bundles that you can add in. And we've all probably seen that, right? Right. Um, and the, you're not getting any of that additional revenue, but Amazon's increasing their cart value for their business and they're getting access to the customer data. I'm not sharing any of that with you. So that kind of got me thinking with my processes. I was like, well, what, what if I could just sell my products, like offer my products as an upgrade opportunity when someone's interested in my book and then I just keep all of the revenue it goes to me and they also get to like learn more about my processes. That just <laughs> makes sense, right? Like, well, right. why would we not do that? So that's essentially then the segue into the book funnel formula. And the way that I laid this out into there's three different phases. And within those phases, this is where Janine was saying there's seven different steps within that. Thanks so much for walking us through the, kind of the myths, because I remember when I first published my book in 2005, and you went up on Amazon, that was a huge thing. Like, wow, you're a real author because you're up on Amazon. <laughs> and you're right. A lot of authors get freaked out though. And I'd love for you to talk about this. They get freaked out about, oh, but if I if I go and I am the one that has the book, then I'm going to get loaded down with offers. I'm going to get loaded down. I won't be able to keep up with all the mail outs that I have to do with my book. Do you want to talk a little bit about how it's a slow process to selling your book through that funnel at beginning author's um, steps? You know what I'm talking about? So, I mean, what I do is I don't touch any books at all. So even though I'm selling my book through my own system, I'm taking control of that. I can control that system. I am not in charge of the fulfillment. So I have an external fulfillment provider that just prints and ships my book and it plugs straight into the software that I use, bookfunnels.io. And that allows me to just, when an order comes in, I don't have to worry about shipping it and, and uh, putting an envelope, sending it out. I don't need to think about like getting hiring someone to do that. It's just all automated. I don't touch a single copy. The, the other thing that I think you're more alluding to, Janine, is when you are using a book funnel, you're taking back control of that process. So it's up to you to get the traffic to come to the book funnel. And you're the one that's in charge of if you send hundred people to your book funnel that month, or if you send a hundred thousand people to your book funnel that month, and you might wonder well, where, where do those people come from? And it's essentially the hot dog cart analogy. If you've, if you're familiar with this. So if you're thinking about where to get your traffic from, um, and if you've got a, a hot dog cart and you want to sell hot dogs, that's your business. You could set up in your front yard outside there. You could set up, you'd have the best like premium hot dogs ever, like the best, best quality product. And you set up outside your yard and maybe you get one or two people walking past. Maybe you get some friends or family um, to come in and buy a hot dog, but no one really knows about you. You're not out there. You're not um, able to be visible. So you don't sell a lot of hot dogs. And that's probably where, like, if you're at that stage one author where your book hasn't been seen, that's probably where you're at and what you're doing. You've just got your, your hot dog cart out in front of your yard at the moment. And what you need to think about is how could you take, where could you take that hot dog cart to put it in a more prime position to be able to sell more hot dogs? And you want to relate this back to your book. So with the hot dog cart, you might want to go to, say, a music festival where there's going to be lots of hungry people ready to buy. They're looking for lunch, looking for dinner. They've just been dancing. Um, they're, they're eager to go ahead and order uh, their, their food. And you're going to sell a lot more hot dogs there, right? So you could position yourself just at the entrance to a music festival and you could be claiming some people, some customers coming in as they come in and uh, sell some hot dogs like that. That'd be the equivalent of kind of organic traffic. You're not really in control. Like there might be some people who are hungry, but it could be people leaving to go home. You're not quite <laughs> sure, but there is people there. But wouldn't it be a better idea to pay a little bit of money to the organizers of the festival to put your hot dog cart right at the other side of the stage so that when the acts have finished, everyone turns around and they're then hungry, they're looking for food uh, as they're leaving. 
and then you're just going to clear up because you've got all these people that have been that sender. You're in the right, you've got the right crowd in front of you at the right time, and they're going to want your hot dogs and you're going to make all the money with your, your hot dogs. The equivalent to that with your book is going to be paying some money for advertising to be able to get your book in front of the right people. And then you, what you can do is the amount of money that you spend on the advertising is going to relate to how many people you bring into your world. And you're not going to start off with get scared, like, oh, I'm going to spend $10,000 on ads this month. And like, how, how am I going to pay for that? You're going to start <laughs> off small, you're going to get some results, and then you're going to be able to scale that up and actually have reliable book sales, which is something that speaking to so many nonfiction authors can be such a, a rare thing. Um, there's this thing of the book launch hangover, where, and I talk about this in my book, where you put all of your efforts into your book launch and you get all your friends and family and colleagues and Facebook groups and clients and everyone to order your book to get your bestseller badge. And that's amazing. And it gets you like the big accolade at the beginning. But then what happens to your book sales? Start to fizzle out. And then your book's just there on the digital bookshelf or even on the actual bookshelf if you've got like all the printed copies in your garage. And you think kind of what happens now? I don't need to, like, am I going to do another big launch again? Like, how, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Whereas what you can do is actually utilize a book funnel and utilize some advertising to be able to start getting consistent people day after day, week after week, month after month to start coming through and ordering your book. And if you have a funnel process in place where not just ordering the first, the actual book, the first step in the process, but you have a system where you know that actually a percentage of people will also take an upgrade offer. And then that's going to start to liquidate the money. So you're getting back the money that you're spending on the advertising immediately at that point. And that's where the magic starts to happen because you can start to put a thousand dollars into ads and automatically you get that thousand dollars back through your digital products. And you're starting to build that database like James was talking about. And that's what's really valuable because that's where you can get your, your clients for your higher ticker or higher ticket offers from that database. And you're not actually really spending the money on advertising because you're getting it back and you're liquidating that. And that's what the, the book funnel formula is all about. And one of the things that I was able to do with Gary's book funnel was he had a position in it where if somebody had the doorbell ring and they abandoned their cart, uh, it would send me an email and let me know that somebody had abandoned their cart. And it was all automated so that another email was immediately sent out and reminded them, hey, you left this in, you left this in your cart. And I had three emails over the course of four months where people were like, oh, wow, thank you so much for doing that because I really wanted your book. I just forgot. So how many times have you ever had somebody give you an email <laughs> saying thank you? So Gary, I've never been able to tell you that, but I wanted to share that with you while we were here. And that, so that's the value of the automated system that Gary works and his team work on. The other thing I'd like you to share with us about is how people really want what we have to offer, but we get so worried that we don't want to be that guy. Talk to us about how bump up offers are not necessarily pushing things on people, but we're solving the next problem. Do you mind sharing a little bit about your education in that regard? Because that was very helpful when you were describing that to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a really good point, Janine, because this is super important, but like so simple once you, you mm -hmm. get it as well. So we kind of have two different types of upgrade offers. We have the bump upgrade. Now that is on the order form, when someone comes into your funnel and they're going to order a copy of your book, that might be a free plus shipping. It might be pay for the book, get the shipping free. Um, but they're going to pay probably 10 bucks, something like that, to get a copy of your book. Then on the order form, there's going to be a checkbox with a paragraph of text called the bump upgrade. And this is going to allow them to add an additional item to their cart at this point. Now, there's quite some psychology that goes into this because if you think they haven't actually proceeded with their initial order yet, and you're already offering them something else. So that's the first one. Once they've clicked send or click submit on that button, you can then take them to the next step. And this is where you can offer them a one-click offer or a upsell. The reason I call it a one-click offer is because they've entered their credit card details on the previous step. So they don't need to re-enter their credit card details again on the second step in order to buy something else. So this is where it's very easy to be able to sell courses or like higher price products, maybe $97, $197, even $297 packages like that, depending on your marketplace, because there's so much less friction there of trying to get someone to pull out their cargo and get their wallet. Like they've already done that part. 
So now they're also in buying mode and they're excited about what it is that you have to offer. If they weren't, they wouldn't have purchased your book. So the people you're getting on that page are the, the hottest, hottest people. So that's the two different types of offers. With the bump upgrade, these are like my absolute favorite because they're so easy to implement because it's literally three sentences, something like that. And I've actually, can I um, pull up a slide to show, Angeline? Yes, please do. I, you should have permission. But Gary and I have worked together on multiple projects. And the thing that was surprising to me was my own resistance to some of it because I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be that person that was like pushing things on to people. But as Gary was talking to me, I realized, no, what we were doing with my products was the one problem was author podcasting. The book was solving for authors how they go about uh, we just see your Zoom screen, Gary, if that's what you want. Um, they just saw the author podcasting. Oh, there we go. Now we're good. And then, and then the second one was I was giving them an upgrade, just clicking on the button, yes, upgrade now. And the second thing was the 10 steps to a successful podcast, you know, being a guest on the podcast, how some 10 things that you could do to be better. And then my one click offer was the $197 video that I sent them explaining how to go ahead and pitch to podcasters to get on their programs and how you go about building a media kit. And so it was like every, every problem that I knew my people were going to have, there was another product that was going to solve that problem. And anybody understanding what they wanted or what situation they were in was helpful. So go ahead, Gary, talk to us about how you built this out. Yeah, sure. So I couldn't get it to go properly on the screen. So I just got it my, my slides here. This is from my webinar. But um, you can see an example of my bump offer here. Now, the reason why this is so exciting, it's just four sentences that you're adding to the page. I, I talk about this in my webinar that this doubles the revenue that I generate from my book sales without having any additional and uh, needing any additional customers because it's that powerful and uh, it's so simple to do because it's the, only the four sentences. But to your point, Janine, of it being not feeling scammy and not feeling um, like th th you don't want to be perceived that way. The big thing that we're doing with the order bump is we're not even at that stage of thinking like, what's the next thing that we're um, going to sell? What we want to do with our order bump is sell based on convenience. So if you think about it with um, like airline travel, People are going to pay to upgrade. Everyone's getting on the same plane, but a certain percentage of people are going to pay to upgrade for the convenience factor. They want to you know, get their early boarding. They want to sit in a seat that lies flat, like whatever that looks like. You're always going to have a percentage of people who are going to want the more convenient option and be willing to pay for that. So how do you do that with your book funnel? Well, someone's ordering, say it's a physical copy of your book. They're going to have to wait for that to ship and they're going to have to wait to receive that. So why not offer them the opportunity to get access to the digital version of the book immediately so they can start reading right away? This is great because you don't need to create any other products. You don't need to um, think of anything else. You don't need to like do a big sales pitch. It's literally the thing they're already interested in, but just to give them access to it immediately instead of needing to wait. And it's just a convenience-based upgrade. And um, we get on average 30% of people who are buying the book will upgrade to the bump offer. And that's going to allow us to increase the revenue generated by a book by 125%. So you can see we actually make, I um, have a free plus shipping offer on my book where it's 895. So for every hundred orders that come in, I make $895 on the front end from my book sales. I actually make $1,110 from the bump upgrades, even though it's just 30 of those people who are upgrading to that, I make more money on that aspect of it. And this is just the first upgrade in the process. Once you've got someone to confirm their order at this stage, so they've clicked that submit button and they're going to that next step, which is your one-click offer, that's where you want to be thinking about what's the new problem that someone's going to encounter based on what they're buying. So with my book funnel, I, well, with my book, I'm talking about book funnels. I'm showing you how to automate the process of building a high converting book funnel. But once you know how to create a high converting book funnel, you're going to want to know how to get traffic to that. And that's kind of what we talked about with the hot dog cart analogy. You're going to want to know how to get people to that. So a perfect then one-click offer at that stage would be 
talking about now that you know how to build a high converting book funnel because you've got the book that shows you exactly how to do it the next thing that you're going to need is going to be traffic and highly targeted visitors coming to that so we've got a facebook ads training here that we sell to our clients and then we'll give you a special offer on this today just for coming through and ordering a copy of the book and that's how you can position your offers in a way that doesn't seem super scammy or people get annoyed and um, all that kind of stuff what we don't like to do these days is have upsell after upsell after upsell and try like pop-ups coming up everywhere and all this kind of crazy stuff <laughs> want to keep it reasonably streamlined so you've got your bump offer i probably have no more than two one-click offers in the process and that's kind of like a, enough for you to be able to maximize the process yourself deliver a, a good quality experience to your new customers coming in your new readers coming in and then um, also not to annoy anyone with the sales process itself Thank you so much. And can we see your lovely face again? I'll let you stop your screen share. That, hey, yeah. there we go. There's the man. <laughs> okay. So before I ask any more questions of Gary, I'm going to bring everybody back. Does anyone have any questions uh, with what he's talking about? Is anybody at a place where they are even thinking about using book funnels for their books or their processes? Go ahead, Cheryl, and go ahead and unmute yourself, hon. I'm just curious who you get that would do the uh, third party that would actually take care of it, send them out. How do you find yeah, people question. like that? Yeah, so we use a company called AccuTrack. Um, they are based in California, and they integrate directly with this bookfunnels.io software that I'm using to sell my books. Um, and then it's literally like you don't touch anything. You have the order comes into their warehouse. Uh, it's not print on demand as such. So you would order like a quantity of books. I think the minimum order amount is 250 books. And um, with that, then they will like store them in their warehouse. And then when an order comes in, they will literally go and pack one, pick it, pack it and send it out to your customer. Okay. So Thank you so much. If you wanted a print on demand, that's not the way to go then, right? I mean... You'd have to have quite a few books going out to get somebody to do that, correct? Is that what I'm understanding? Reason reasonably, you want to make sure that your book is selling, that there is a market for your book, certainly, in order to um, do that. Print on demand can work out a lot more expensive because you're you're obviously like doing it on demand. So what we do is order the um, the books up front to save money on the printing cost. I think it's um, two, 250 is the minimum amount, but you know, like if you order a thousand books, then the minimum, th then the per unit cost is going to be less. And then if you order like 5,000 books, so it's going to be less. So, um, but with people who, with authors who are just starting out, we, we know because of our process that like 250 books shouldn't be too hard to sell. So that's like a perfect kind of starting place to be able to, um, have that system set up and you, you're not thinking about it, which is the main thing. Thanks, Cheryl. Does anybody else have any questions before we move on to the next one? Yeah, go ahead, Drew. Hey, Gary. So, so when you're you're paying for like the what their printing cost is when you're buying the two fifty, right? You know, like because if we am with the Amazon, it costs oh. me two eighty three to print. But what? How do you? What are you actually paying for for the two hundred fifty books? The... Yeah, so you're just paying the printing cost up front, right. and then they'll store the books printed in their warehouse. And then okay. once they have done that, then it's only when you actually sell the books that then they'll rebill you for the cost of the, the shipping and handling going out. Yeah. Got it. So conceivably, it's really not that much money if their printing cost for per book is not that high. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Um, so yeah, two, 250 books is like a, a great place to start for if someone is just like getting into the game, I'd say. Okay. Um, Don in the chat asked, do you pay for warehouse storage? I do. I think it's $6 a month. <laughs> yep. Amazing. <laughs> Very good question. I love these people. <laughs> They're my kind of people. <laughs> because that's yeah. all that's all those hidden costs that we have to put into our programs. You know, we have to get our money back in some way. And so that's very helpful to have that. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, Gary, when it comes to, oh, oh, are there any other questions before I move on for people? Hey, Cheryl, welcome back. 
Okay. Anybody I, else? I, I had a question. Sure. What, what was the name of that company again that does your uh, fulfillment? Yeah, AccuTrack. AccuTrack. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you guys get a copy of my book, the book funnel formula, it mentions AccuTrack in here as well. And what it says is when you reach out to AccuTrack, if you mention that Gary from the book funnel formula sent you, then they give you a, I think it's a 20%. It might not be 20%. There is a discount on your phone. <laughs> um, don't quote me on 20%. <laughs> right, no, no no quotes. I know it you and I have a lot of numbers. Be. Yeah, a lot of numbers running through our head. Okay. Anybody else have any questions before we move on? No? Okay. Gary, you gave us a bonus. You want to talk to us through it a little bit, the free download? Yeah, so this is a free digital copy of my book. So nice segue into that. Um, <laughs> So yes, <laughs> if you, you can go through my book funnel as well. So if you go to bookfunnels.io, I can put that in the chat as well and um, to get a physical copy, if you're that way inclined and um, you pay for the shipping and handling to get it sent out for you and you'd actually see the whole book funnel process. If you just like, cause, cause you guys are part of the, the conference, I wanted to just give you an easy way just to grab my book and to be able to dive in and read it digitally, which is what the link currently in the chat is. Um, so my book, the book funnel formula, seven steps to transform your book into an online selling machine. And it's basically breaking down that process that we talked about, taking control of the, the sales process through three different phases, acquiring customers, how to bring readers in, liquidate, how to liquidate the ad spend that you use to bring people towards your, your book and your offers, and then to ascend. So how do you get someone from ordering the book to joining your membership, but buying your online course? Uh, working with you as a client, whatever that looks like within your own situation. So does that help you folks out? All right. Are there any takeaways that you'd care to share? No. So for me, when I first met Gary, I had half the process, but he really helped me get the other half put together. My half the process was I had people purchasing my book from me, and then I would have an email that automatically sent out and said, I go to the post office every Friday. <laughs> Your book will be shipped to you on the that. following Friday. Remember that, Gary? <laughs> and on some of my books that have very low uh, ping rates, I still offer, I still go to Stripe every Friday. I see if I have any books, you know, so that's what I do because I'm not paying for traffic. But when it came to author podcasting and Entrepreneurs HQ, I knew I wanted to drive traffic. And that's when I knew I needed to invest in a process and a system. And I started getting Google ads and that kind of thing. And it is something that does work very well. So that's why I had Gary on you hear a lot of people talk about marketing and promotion. And the very first thing I want to chat with every author about is wait till you are making money. Okay. And see, I was making money. I had a, a system crippled relative to what Gary offers, but you know, I had a system and it was making money and, and it was, it was consistent with the outreach that I was doing. So I knew then that my, my business was then ready. Anything you care to share, Gary? Uh, so the, the only other thing I was going to share is that when we were working with clients like Jenny, even we're back when we, we worked with you as a client, we would get, we would essentially get someone in and like know that we can help them, but you would have to pay for my services. And then we would say to the client or the student, you, um, right, you need to go and sign up for a ClickFunnels account. Some of you might be familiar with ClickFunnels as a funnel builder. You need to go and sign up for an active campaign account so that you can like email out from the, the book funnel. You need to go and sign up for a Vimeo account so that you can have hosted videos on the pages because uh, we don't like to have YouTube videos because someone can click on the YouTube logo and they're off to YouTube and they're going to get distracted and that doesn't really work. Um, you want to have like your calendar scheduler there. Do you, are you, you're going to upgrade to courses or if you're going to offer your book in a member's portal, you might need to have a, a software like Kajabi, something like that. And all of a sudden it was mounting up all these different subscriptions that people had to get to even be able to work with us. So what we've done of more recent times is create this platform called bookfunnels.io, which brings everything that you need to create a high converting book funnel into one place for just a simple one-time fee of $97 a month. So it's kind of like you had all of these different $97, $149, like $70 all over here, and they had to stitch all these things together. 
What we've done now is taken it into you just need the one software and that's going to allow you to do everything that you need to do as an author to hold your database, to email out your database, to be able to book calls with your prospects, to be able to have these one click offers, to be able to um, have your members log into your members portal and download your book. All of this good stuff's all in one place. Um, and that essentially has been a game changer for us, but more certainly like our clients and students, because we we get rid of all that complexity. And that's one of the things that I definitely wanted to bring Gary back on, because as these businesses started running into those situations, they saw that there was a lot of pushback because all of a sudden what somebody thought was one price point for their product and services, all of a sudden it was blossoming and mushrooming out. And so that's why I brought Gary on. It was like, he's now got it all under one roof and you're not having to run around like a chicken with your head cut off, getting all these other avenues put together for you. So thank you very much, Gary, for making life easier for people. <laughs> Cause I know that was not easy. I know that took you what, two years, two or three years to negotiate all that. So thank you for your hard work because it, it serves a greater community that way. Anybody have any questions? Cause we have about 20 minutes before the top of the hour with Gary. No questions? Okay. So Gary, was there anything else you cared to share with us? Because we have about 20 minutes. Oh, James, go ahead, dude. Let me get rid of my avatar. Okay. Um, you don't need to see the <laughs> dog and my wife and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gary, have you ever run across a concept called the allowable cost per order? Yeah, so like your cost per acquisition, essentially, yeah? Yeah, but doing it as a profit first calculation versus what people traditionally think about. It's an old direct marketing concept. Um, I'm like Janine. I've been doing this for a long ass time. Um, and it basically gives you the budget that you can spend on your book funnel, the budget you can spend profitably on getting the leads into the funnel. And I loved what you were saying about the order bump because that's a key part of the allowable cost per order calculation, which is it's not about the cost of the thing you're selling, it's about the average order value that you're generating out of the program. Oh, James knows then, this stuff. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get that technical, but I love that you're going there. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, and it's important because the overall theme here of, of Janine Summit is, you know, it's all well and good to do all this stuff, but you need to make money at it. And the allowable cost per order concept is it's proven, it's foundational, and yet it's not that commonly known these days because it's been around since the 1970s. Um so that that might be a conversation worth having at some point. I'd love to chat with yeah. you about that. Yes, the two of you are more than welcome to do that. And then at some point, if you would record yourself so Janine could put it on the Janine Boland show, she would be very <laughs> thrilled to be able to do that <laughs> because there are people that do think that way. And a lot of people just focus on cost or what their budget is, and they don't understand those intricacies. And it's nothing complicated. It's not like it's number theory. It's base, It's not even algebra. It's just arithmetic. But it's scary because people see the e equal sign or the plus sign or a percentage sign, and they, they freak out because it's like got math now. Oh, my God, I'm not a mathematician. So having you guys that know what you're talking about then break and then break it down into simple language for the rest of us would be delightful. Yeah, so, it, and so it is. Something. It isn't hard, but it does freak people out. Right. And it's it's so easy to go, well, it's my budget's 10% of sales. Mm -hmm. And so and it and, almost and so, always never is. Or now, Cheryl, Cheryl, my publisher here in the room, has never said this to me. But the first time that I was trying to get money, it's not just for rich people published in 2005. They said, every time you have an equation, Janine, you're going to drop your readership by 50%. So you're allowed <laughs> one equation. And I'm like, what? You know, so this, just letting you guys know, maybe these times have changed and people are more mathematically kind, but just, you know, no, they that's aren't. why I'm saying, I'd like you guys to chat with us about this and then we can get, put the whiteboard up and you and Gary can go to town on it. So oh, anyway, that would be note so much for fun. self for later. <laughs> go Gary. 
<laughs> this since is your hour, have, honey. Like, since we have just a little bit of time, like let me just share my screen again. So I actually have sure. a calculator. Um, I was just going to share the right page. Let's see if it does. That's always the tickle, isn't it? Trying to share the yes, right page. Yeah. So inside of bookfunnels.io, we have a calculator specifically for calculating this in terms of your allowable cost per acquisition of how much you can spend to acquire a customer. Obviously, if you're doing a physical book, you need to take into account the fulfillment aspect of that as well. But you can literally come in here and you can type in um, essentially like model what it's going to look like. And based on my training, we have benchmarks for things like conversion rates, but you put in your book price point, the conversion rate, you can put in your order bump, your price point, and um, the conversion rate. And if you can have one one click offer, you can have two, and then it's going to come up with your average cart value that James had mentioned there. And that's going to be the total amount of revenue that you generate for however many sales. It was a hundred book sales. The total amount of revenue that you generated through the funnel with everything. If someone purchased an upgrade, if someone just purchased the book, every one of those sales, and then divide that by the number of book sales that came through. That's going to give you your average cart value. And from that, then you can deduct any cost that you have there with in terms of um, the actual fulfillment. And that gives you then your allowable cost per acquisition. So we have this kind of built into the system so that you're not in the dark and you're not um, wondering like, how do I get started and all that kind of stuff. Um, so great point, James, I love that. And, and calculators were built for people who are nervous about equations. So, you know, there are calculators for everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you very yes. much. Appreciate Gary. you taking the time. Gary, I just got an email that I'm your favorite person. <laughs> I just downloaded, I got your, I downloaded the, the free book and I'm like, got an email. Thank you, Gary. You're my favorite person. Did, did you not see me typing away in the corner? <laughs> I saw that. It was, copy was spelled fat. Yeah, you were doing it fast. I was <laughs> So thank Good you very stuff. much, everyone. We appreciate you being here. And also the fact that you're willing to ask questions, willing to learn from these experts that I've met all over the world and absolutely adore the work that they're doing and what they're doing for the communities around them. These truly are helping authors, uh, Gary in Gary's case, get the message out there. And that's why I always am talking to you guys about make money first, then worry about marketing. Make sure you have money coming in and generating before you start worrying about promotion and marketing because you want to have those systems locked down so that when you hire somebody like Gary, you don't overwhelm your systems. You're able to generate what you need to do. You know what your, your, what your message is, you're clear, you're concise, and you're laser focused, and that will help you uh, achieve more with that. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes, and so Gary, any last closing thoughts you would like before we move on to the next speaker? Um, one other thing that I would just mention as well is I think like if a, a lot of people here are in this sort of publishing space or obviously like do tend to market to authors or experts or professionals and all that kind of thing, people who might have books. We also have an affiliate program for doing this as well. So if you want to, obviously, if you had an account, you were using it, you have the opportunity to recommend that to other people as well. I can have that as a passive income opportunity off the back of that. So if anyone's interested in that, then obviously we'd love to chat with you and, and kind of get you on board with that aspect as well. Thank you. And yes, we love affiliate programs, don't we? Especially when it's with people we, we know, like, and trust. And for those of you who are just entered the room, here is Gary's bonus again, because I know the chat, uh, he has a book that's free that you can download. Um, and I highly recommend that you download it, you read from it, make sure it happens for you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gary, so much for being with us. And I know you're, I know you're skipping dinner, or you're getting ready to go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate you no, being okay. here <laughs> and you're welcome to stay in the room for a moment. Uh, the next people, speaker will be at the top of the hour. And so I am going to dash off to the other breakout rooms to see what's happening. Uh, and so I'm going to close up mine for just a minute and you folks are willing to, to network among yourselves. I will be right back. Happy to answer any more questions and stuff as well, if anyone's sticking around. Hey, Gary. Mine isn't necessarily a question, but definitely hit home when you were talking about the book launch hangover. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Yeah. So, and James and, and, um, Janine know about this, but so I was supposed to launch my, my newest book, Chameleon Mindset at the end of last year. And then, um, I had signed up for an anthology book that I was going to launch at the beginning of this year. Well, my book got delayed and the other book got accelerated. So I ended up launching two books within two weeks of themselves. (laughs) So yeah, I don't recommend it. Please don't, don't do that. But one thing that I did with the book funnel, um, just to kind of take advantage of that kind of tight window is because I was doing all the promotion for my book, I did that bump off our, on the book that wasn't even available yet because it was going to be available in two weeks and I knew I'd have stock. So I, it's just kind of encouraging people to like rethink how you're doing it. Even if you're like, oh, book two in the series, maybe you're a fiction writer, right? And kind of get preview orders ready or you're going to do novella and some of these other smaller book things. But um, I, I love book funnels. This is exciting. I'm excited to check check out your your system so <laughs> awesome love it thanks nikki <laughs> good stuff i am um, yeah the, the whole bump upgrade thing is just it's so easy to do in my webinar i talk about i kind of tease the idea of the, the one paragraph of text that doubles the revenue i generate from my book and then i'm like which which paragraph which chapter do you think the text is in and we're kind of looking through the book and it's like do, do you think i added it in the introduction do you think it's like the conclusion and it's like it's not actually in the book itself it's just on the order page of someone getting the book and just those four sentences have made me thousands and thousands of dollars and made clients like thousands and thousands of dollars because it's just like the perfect time to get someone to increase um the, the, like what they're going to order because it's that convenience based aspect um or maybe in your case it's it's where it's um you've, you've not got the other thing available at the moment but you can give them another option like makes so much sense so cool oh janine's back uh, yes <laughs> we experiencing technical difficulties <laughs> <laughs> And so thank you everyone for your patience as we pull all this stuff together and, and make it happen for each other. So um, I was going to wait another 10 minutes. So if you want to take a break or you're welcome to go to one of the other breakout rooms if you care to. Um, but I was just going to kind of put a pause on things and let people take a break. And I'll start speaking at the top of the hour. And that's where I'll talk about the 90 minute workshops and how you can make a very rough build on things and still be able to make money. And I think that's uh, one of the things authors need to be reminded of is that things don't have to be perfect. Hey, Deb, great to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be and here. I think you are in room two. That's where you need to go. Is that right? As speaking. So you're speaking at the top of the hour. No? Yeah. So um... uh, I'm going to be shifting you just a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just to relax. It's okay. We got I you covered. I went all through the emails. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Normally, I'm on earlier, but actually, That's I can go ahead and move her for you, Janine. Um, oh, what? Well, thank you, Tasha. I thought I'm you were here. in the other room. Okay. Yep, I'm both places. <laughs> Clone myself. <laughs> all right, I'll get you moved up. Thank you very much. Deb needs to go to room two, please. <laughs> Peace out, dear. Enjoy your time. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. So yes, it's time to grab lunch if you're in that time zone. <laughs> and uh, for, for that, um, no, I was having a lot of fun because uh, when we tested everything, we were able to record all the breakout rooms. And so Tasha is having to split herself between breakout rooms so that we have record buttons. We don't have, we don't know why we're having to do it that way, but she figured out a fix. And so she's like, I learned to clone myself. So she has her tablet in one room she has her laptop in the other so thank you tasha appreciate you um yep anything else we can do for you gary because i know you have an evening left with the fam um i think uh, you've done a brilliant job of helping us with the funnel i'll send people your way uh when they're ready to move their uh products up to that stake but anything new that we can uh talk about that's on the horizon for uh book funnel io you have a new new vision for it just the vision is helping authors take back control of the sales process. And that essentially is the the big thing that's going to allow the, the difference between making a little bit of money on the side from your book to your book being your full on business and your um being able to monetize that in so many different ways. And that's just like what I'm so passionate about now mm-hmm. is just being able to get that out to so many more people. Um, it used to be, as you know, like thousands of dollars to work with myself and my team. 
Um, mm -hmm. And now we've kind of like packaged all of that stuff up that we used to charge. Um, and you can get it with like the, everything's kind of built out already inside of um, bookfunnels.io. And you just need to go in and, you know, like tweak and put in your own book instead of the template. And um, then you're like ready to launch. Thank you. That's where you and James are so powerful and helpful to the community is the fact that you guys built out all these templates so that it made it super easy for people to go in and plug and play what they need to do. So thank you very much for all your hard work because as somebody who works on the back end and front end, I know the amount of time and effort and tearing your hair out as you run test, test modules on your software, <laughs> how that can really drive you nuts sometimes. Well, Gary, have a wonderful evening and thank you so much for joining us here on Entrepreneurs HQ. Thanks so much, Janine. Thank you, everyone. I'll yep. uh, see you guys here. You betcha. Bye-bye now. <laughs>